Oh man, we are definitely keeping the hat on today. Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a 3D text effect all in Adobe Illustrator. It's really easy. There's going to be some perspective, a bit of extrusion, some color. It's going to be really cool. And uh, yeah, so we'll just jump to the screen now and get straight into the tutorial. Okay. So you can see here that I've got a new artboard in Illustrator. It's 1920 by 1080. First of all, I'm just going to grab my type tool, my text tool over here. Click, type a word, doesn't matter what it is. We're going to go with boom for no particular reason. Boom. Okay. Let's hold shift and scale this up. I'm going to pick a font, probably my favorite font in the world ever. So we'll just click over there in the character panel and type in Gotham black. There we go. Probably just scale this up a little bit more. And if you're on an older version of Illustrator, then your character panels and things uh, will be along the top most likely. But you can just go up to Window, and then you've got all of the different panels here that you can kind of click on, open up, customize. So you can fully deck out your workspace however you like. Okay. So we've got some text. Now we're going to be adding a shadow and extrusion to this. So when you're kind of working with 3D, um, if you have like a really dark color, it makes it quite difficult to see that extrusion. So what I'm going to do just for the beginning of the tutorial is just pick a really bright color. So it just helps me distinguish between the text and then the 3D extrusion because you get some kind of shading going on as well. So we'll start with boom. And I think what I'll probably do is actually just decrease the tracking, bring all of those letters a little bit closer together. But I can still edit this in a moment if I want to. Okay, so happy with my text. All good. Let's go up to effect, down to 3D, extrude and bevel. And this is where the magic happens. So we've got some presets here, so you can click on these. And if we just check the preview box, it shows a particular angle. So you can use the presets if you want. I like to do it custom personally, because then what I can do is just enter zero in all of these boxes and it almost resets the text. So it's just facing me or facing you when you're doing this. And then what you can do is you can either enter the values here or you can hover over these different points and they correspond to the X, Y and the Z axes. Well, the Z is definitely somewhere. So you can see I can lift this up and it uh, is tilting the text backwards, but then I can pull it down so then it's like we're above the text looking down. I can rotate this to the side. And there we go, the z-axis becomes available in blue. At least I think that's the z-axis. It's one of them. <laughs> Three axes, it doesn't matter. You've got your red, green, and blue. Grab the handles, pull it around. Okay. So, you, you know, you can see in real time that you can do this. You could do whatever you want, uh, but that's just ridiculous. So let's set that back to zero. We'll go back to zero. For this tutorial, I'm gonna tilt this up ever so slightly. And then what I'm gonna do is actually grab the perspective slider here from the drop down and just drag this to the right. And what you'll see happens is it gradually applies more perspective to the object that I'm applying this effect to. So it kind of almost like sucks it into the distance, if that makes sense. In fact, if I add a larger extrusion number here than 50 points, you'll be able to see it a little bit more clearly. So let's whack it up to, let's go for like 700 and something. So if I go back to zero on the perspective, you can see straight down with a massive extrusion. And then we'll just bring this up and you can see it just pulls it back and back and back. And you can add, well, you can add a, as much perspective as you like. You can see it can go a bit crazy. Sometimes you get something happening called a self-beveling intersection or something, and it will sometimes pop up with a warning triangle. And in fact, I'll show you this in a minute and how to get around it. So if I just move this out of the way as best I can, you can see here something really strange is going on with the 
uh, the letter M. So we could click OK and just take a better look at that. So that's not quite right. We can't really use that. Uh, the B looks like it's gone a little bit funky as well. So if we just select this and here under the appearance panel, we can click on our 3D extrude and bevel. We can go back into it. Just check preview again so you can see that real time preview. And there's a few different ways that you can get around this like self bevel intersection where essentially it just doesn't render correctly. You can sometimes adjust things like perspective, the extrude depth, maybe move the angle a little bit until it just disappears. Something I found that's one cheeky way of getting around it is for this particular example anyway with this letter, the problem seems to be rotating around this axis here. So if I put 0 0.1, you can see that for whatever reason, that fixes the problem. So if you do get any issues like this with your word and your letters and one particular one isn't displaying correctly, try entering uh, different values, change the perspective, the extrude and bevel, and then the X, Y, and Z axis, and even offsetting it by 0 0.1, so it like rotates it a ridiculously small amount, seems to fix this render issue. So um, great, so we can carry on with the tutorial, which is really good. So I can click OK. Now what I always like to do is at the moment this text is still editable even with this effect applied. So I could go and type yay or type anything I wanted and it instantly just renders it with that 3D effect. So that's really cool. So I want to keep this editable version. So I'm just going to hold Alt and just drag, throw that up there. That's the editable one that I keep in case anything goes wrong or I just want to go back and type the same effect with a different word. Okay, so back to our text. What I'm gonna do now is you can see that this is still text with an effect applied. So we kind of need to finalize this so we can go to the next step. So if I go to object and expand appearance, what I'm gonna do now is jump into outline mode. So that's command or control Y on the keyboard, depending on whether you're on a Mac or a PC. And you can kind of get a wireframe or an outline view of everything that you're looking at. So what I'm going to do now, as you can see, if I move this around, it is grouped. We need to separate the faces of all of the letters. So that's this area here, this front face from all of this shadow. And you can see there's a lot of paths there. So we need to clean that up as well. So if we just go to object and ungroup. Okay, we've separated the letters, but we need to separate everything. We need to separate the shadow from the face of the letter itself. So how I like to do this anyway is just drag over everything and then just keep ungrouping until you un ungroup no longer. There we go, all done. So now what I can do is click on each of the letter faces by holding shift to select all of them. Now you can just manually move this. What I like to do personally for um, accuracy is to hold down shift on the keyboard and use the arrow key to nudge this out. And I'll show you why in a moment. So again, if we go back into outline mode, command or control Y, you can see we've got this like mess of paths over here. We need to clean that up. So let's just drag over everything. And down here from the Pathfinder panel, just click Unite. What it does is it combines that big mess of paths into one single path. Now, if you don't see the Pathfinder panel, older version of Illustrator, just go up to Window, down to Pathfinder. There you go. And sometimes you get these, uh, these random little bits, you can keep those in. Sometimes it's nicer to just remove them and have like a, a clean, uh, solid shadow. So you can do that with the direct selection tool. Just click on any of the anchor points and then hit your delete or backspace key on your keyboard a couple of times. Poof, it's gone. So there we go, that looks considerably cleaner. Now the reason that we clean it up like this is because if I want to apply gradients or other effects to the shadow, with all of those other paths and everything, it just causes so many issues and it won't apply a smooth gradient. So it's always good practice to just clean things up like this as you go, because then it makes applying other effects or doing other things later down the line considerably easier. Not to mention it's just like, it's good, good housekeeping. It's cleaner, it's tidier, you know? Attention to detail and all that good stuff. Okay, so command or control, command or control Y, bring us out of outline mode. And then what I can do now is drag over all of these letters and we could do the same thing. Actually, we can go over the Pathfinder panel and click on Unite or we could just simply 
group them together if you wanted something a little bit more temporary. So it's entirely up to you. But now essentially these are two single objects and each of these objects has their own fill. So now rather than drag this back up, I'm gonna hold shift and now use the up arrow key. And I know that because I'm using shift and just moving it with the arrow keys, it's gonna go back in exactly the same position that it started. So that's the reason that I use the arrow keys a lot to move things out, make some changes and then move it back. Uh, obviously it's behind at the moment. So we just need to bring those letter faces to the front. So object, arrange, bring to front. There we go, 3D text. And we're just gonna apply a little bit of color now. Okay, so let's select this one. And I think we'll go for this. Oh, look at that, crazy neon pink. Or hot pink or whatever you wanna call it. And then we've got a color for the shadow as well. So what if I wanted to go back in and close that gap? Because the gap between those two O's is a little bit noticeable. So at the moment, these are grouped separately. So what I could do is I could, let's say, double click to go inside this group. We don't need to just ungroup it. We can just go straight inside with a double click. And I'm gonna select the O and the M on the right and use the left arrow key on its own and just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we'll go with it for 12, something like that. And then you can see up here, I can come out of isolation mode and we'll do the same again. So I'll double click on the shadow this time, select this right half and we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Exit isolation mode. And both of these groups are still groups. We haven't like broken them apart or anything. So yeah, there we go. That's how to create a 3D text effect all in Illustrator. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you've got any questions or comments, you know what to do, drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.